Hello everyone and welcome back to the Minecraft++ server. We have uh, made a couple changes since the last video and we're going to go over those really quick before we jump into today's main goal, which is going to be the farm. We're going to make our first multi-block farm and get it up and running to see if we can get that successfully working and get some output from it. And I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. I've not had a whole lot of time this week to do a video and I've kind of ran out of time, so I'm going to try to throw this together as fast as I can. So bear with me, there may be some cuts in the video for me having to craft things or something like that that you don't have to worry about seeing, and that'll save everyone on time and uh, effort. So, with that said, uh, we have a quick little addition here to the basement dwellings of our main building. This is called the Bottler. Now, the Bottler is very useful for uh, our current project that we're doing of we're making farms but we're going to be using cart systems to transport items to and from those farms well to make this track we need creosote oil and as you guys remember we have put all the creosote oil into an iron tank now unfortunately i cannot pipe in uh bottles and pipe bottles out that have creosote oil in them. For some reason, I can't. I, I was told that I could, but I couldn't get it working. So we came up with the best uh, solution we had for the mods we're using, and that is going to be piping creosote oil to the bottler. Now the bottler takes a can. It doesn't take an actual glass bottle. It takes a can, which uh, I can show you how to make. You put the can in, and you provide it power. We're going to run over here really quick. And we're going to turn this engine on that I isolated just for the bottler. And it should start powering up. There we go. And as soon as it gets enough power to stay on, it will fill this can up with creosote oil and we'll have a creosote oil can. There it goes. It's almost finished. And we're done. Creosote oil can. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, what can we do with the creosote oil can? we can make our wooden ties that are going to be part of the track system for normal tracks. And I've already made some, so I can put this in here. Uh, a normal track, excuse me, takes standard rails and uh, wooden ties. To make wooden ties, you have to use a can or a creosote oil bottle and some slabs and that gives you a wooden tie and then you put the ties together to make uh, a wooden track or a rail bed I'm sorry to make a rail bed and then you put the rail bed and the uh, standard rails together and you get a track Now we're gonna I'm not gonna go over really making those today because our main focus is the farm and I've got I think I've got enough items for what we're gonna do but there may be some things I didn't think of to uh, to take with me so that's the only really major change to this area. We did put power over here. Um, I need to turn that off, actually, before that explodes. Uh, I did put power over here to these machines, and I consolidated them, made it a little bit nicer, instead of having gaps in between when we had the, uh, the Sterling engines on them. So let's take a step outside and look at the new changes that are going to be happening here on this new area that we filled in. And the first thing you see is our main building here, which is going to be the power station and refinery. And we'll go over that in a later time. But this is the testing area that I used for trying out the multi-block farm. This is a forestry farm. This is not, uh, you know, some system I put together or whatever. This is an actual part of the mod. And it is called uh, a multi-block farm. And now what this does is it consolidates everything into an automated system for managing uh, your farming tasks. So what you do is, uh, by default, you have a managed um, tree farm. But you can put these uh, chips in or circuit boards inside this socket and tell it to do certain things. So I haven't made those yet, but and we're going to do that in a later time. But for example, I could do tree on uh, the east and north side, and then on south and, uh, I'm sorry, on the west side. And on uh, the south I could do potatoes, and over here I could do um, corn. And it would automatically do uh, plant and harvest all the different types and output them to a chest. Now, 
this was just a test area. This wasn't, uh, this is, we're not going to use this. I'm going to tear this all down. I partly disassembled it already. Uh, the part that we're going to be using is this one over here, and it would start raining as soon as I do this. Uh, let me turn that rain off really quick. Sorry about that. This is the farm we're going to be using. Now, as you can see, that one is above ground, and this one, we only see this little section here. And it is actually finished. This isn't uh, incomplete. And the reason we're doing that is we want everything else hidden except for what we see uh, above ground for the farm. So we're going to take a trip down here. And if you guys remember, I had filled all this in, and so I had to hollow it all back out a few levels down to make use of the modular system that these uh, multi-block farms have. They don't have to all be the same size uh, as far as this platform right here. It could be down here, it could be here, it could be where it is now, and it could be one more up uh, as well, and it will all function properly. Now, this one doesn't have a gearbox, it doesn't have a um, control block, it doesn't have a water valve input block. It's just a, a raw farm that we're going to be working with. And as you can see by default, it is a managed uh, farm for trees, just like the other one was. Uh, but right now, we can't really do anything with it. The reason for that is, like I said, there's no specific inputs or outputs for this farm, so we're gonna have to make those and we're gonna have to provide water and power to it. Now what I went ahead and did is I created one, two, three, four more uh, plots that are going to house uh, different types of farms. So this is going to be the first one we're going to try and work with. Now obviously to get this thing up and running we're going to need a steam boiler, we're going to need a water input, we're going to need a power input, and we're going to need some outputs from the farm. So instead of piping power and oil, or not oil, power and water from the basement or over there, uh, what I did was I went ahead and put some water tanks on top of the building and they're all unfinished except for three which is fine uh, it's not a problem uh, we can make use of those and there's Nugget, hello Nugget <laughs> can't forget Nugget uh, we're going to pipe this into a steam boiler that we're gonna put here temporarily now I think I have everything that I need um, it's gonna be four high, we may not be able to make the tallest one but we can make use of, uh, of at least uh, a decent sized one. So let's make a steam boiler. You guys will probably remember this from one of the first episodes. So we're going to put that there and there and there. Now that should make what we need. Actually, you know what? We're going to have to put... Um, oh, actually, I can do this. We can make a full size uh, steam boiler, just like the one we have in the basement. Now this is a two by two by uh, four, and they go three by three by four, I think is the bigger one for the low pressure. And then the high pressure, I think, can be larger than that. I don't remember exactly, so uh, you have to check the wiki on that. But we need to get water uh, input to this. So we're gonna need some waterproof piping. And I've already put these in the roof, so I know where they are. So we're gonna bring this down here. And I think I've got another one, don't I? Yeah, I do. Okay. Let's do that. Let's bring this one over here so we can make use of all the water. Uh, that shouldn't input into the steam boiler. No, okay, it won't. So we're going to come down, I guess, right here. That should work, I think. We're not really worried about these inputs. We're only worried about the input that's going to the bottom. So it should start filling up, I think. Let's see what happens. I may have to bring it out one. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, okay, so let's break these. And let's break this one. And let's do this. We'll input those there. And we'll put one there. Now it should bring all of the water down into this pipe and into the steam boiler. There we go. Now we're trucking. I was actually looking at the steam boiler uh, side instead of the water side. That's my bad. So, okay, we've got water to this, but we're going to need to put some uh, cold coke in here. So let's actually wait a, a couple minutes here. Let's let that water go ahead and build up. Uh, while we're waiting on that, we can take our golden waterproof pipe. And this is not going to be the end result, but we're just going to temporarily get this going. Uh, I think I have two, yes, I made two industrial engines, so 
Let's put one there and we'll put one here. And we'll take this and we'll go. I guess here's good. This is this is this will work. We'll put one here and we'll put one. Actually, we don't want to do that. We don't want to put them right beside each other. So we'll put one here and we'll put one here. So let's grab this. Actually, we need to break that. That needs to go here. And then bring this one out. So I don't have to worry about getting a wrench and change the direction of these. So those are good to go. We're going to need some levers. Uh, actually, we just need one lever. Put it in between them. And do we have enough water? Yes, we do. Okay, so we'll put some coal coke in here. And hey, we'll let this start warming up. Now, one thing I think I forgot to grab is wooden conductive pipe. I didn't get any wooden conductive pipe because we're going to have to get some power downstairs to our farm. So let me cut the video here and I will go grab some wooden conductive pipe and a couple other items that I think I forgot. And we will be back in just a second. Okay, now we're back. I've finished grabbing the wooden conductive pipe. And I actually went ahead and grabbed the other items for the multi-block farm that we're going to need. So let's put these here. And we have some conductive pipe. Which I uh, actually ran out of this, actually. I think I'm going to have to get some more of this. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Um, yeah, we're going to need a lot more of this. So I may have to make some of those, which is no problem. Uh, we may go into creative and just give ourselves some because I don't want to waste everybody's time. Uh, we're going to actually, let's just go down right here. I don't have a an axe on me, which is fine. It doesn't matter. We'll put that there. And let's go downstairs and see if we can, how cl we'll see how close we can get. It's not going to be very close because <laughs> we got to go way over here. So let's uh, let's see how far we can get with the conductive pipe. I think I'm out of conductive pipe, so we may have to just make some, which is fine. Uh, well, let's pipe it over here. See how far we can get. Let's get rid of that, and that's as far as we're gonna get. Let let's bring it over here, and then we'll just go all the way down. So while we're waiting on our steam to build up uh, even more, let's go back upstairs. And let's make sure that I've got some some uh, material for golden conductive. Because I don't want to go into creative and give myself items that I can't make. So if we can make sure that we can make them, I think we'll be okay. So let's go to golden conductive. And then we need to make a turn. So yeah, we got the redstone. And we have, I think we've got the gold as well. Let's look and see. Oh yeah, we've got a bunch of this. Okay, so let's grab some glass, some gold, and some redstone. And let's make some of these really quick. So one, two, three, four, five. I think that'll be enough. How many is that going to give us? 40? Uh, let's make some more. I just want to make sure that we're going to have enough. There we go. A stack will work. I don't think we're going to use more than a stack. If we do, then I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> but I think that'll be enough. So, for the sake of uh, being legit, we won't uh, we won't give ourselves any. We just went ahead and made some. So That's a good thing. I don't like to give myself stuff that I can't make, so... Okay, so let's bring this down here, and I think we should have enough to get there. Yeah, we're only in the 50s. We'll be fine. So we'll go here, and how far out do we need to go? Actually, we'll just come down. This looks good. We'll follow the top of this glowstone here. I did go to the nether and die a whole bunch. Uh, in between videos, <laughs> trying to get glowstone. Uh, this is about all I've got left. I I didn't really get a whole lot. So, okay, like I said, this these are all just uh, standard blocks, so we can't actually give it an input just yet. So what we did is we got a farm gearbox, we got a farm valve, we got a farm control, and we got a farm hatch. Now each 
of these do something completely different and specific for the farms. So the first thing we want is the farm gearbox. We're going to break this block and we're going to, actually we didn't need to do that. Let's put that cobblestone back. We're going to make use of this level uh, later on, so I'll explain what that's for. So the gearbox, it'll have to recreate. Let's give it a second. Come on. There it is. Okay, so it's back to normal. And now it has a gearbox, which is an input for power. And let's put a conductive pipe here. Now, whenever the steam boiler uh, powers the steam engines and they turn on, it's going to bring power down to this farm. Now, the farm is going to want a whole bunch of items that it doesn't have yet. So, it's actually not going to start working until we provide those uh, necessary requirements. The things we're going to need, uh, most importantly, other than power, is going to be water and materials. So, for water, we have a farm valve that we can input. So, we're going to put that here just for right now. We may change it uh, later on, but for right now, that's where it's going to go. Uh, we've only got 35 waterproof pipes, so we may need some more. I don't think we can get... Actually, you know what? How close are we to... I just had a thought. Instead of using the water tanks... Was it raining? Yes, it's raining. Go figure. Instead of using the water tanks on top of the building... For this example, let's use the water tank that is right here. So we can do this. Let's break this. And let me grab that. Let's break one more. Okay, so we'll bring this pipe out. Yeah, that actually worked really well. Just for uh, the example so we can get this farm going. So I don't want to waste a whole lot of time. Uh, let's break this and that so we should be able to connect these up okay so we'll go downstairs and bring that water pipe in uh, into the into the multi-block farm so instead of having to pipe it down from the roof and, and all that we'll just use this over here now obviously we're not going to be able to use that tank for the entire section but for right now for the sake of an example we'll just go with this uh, so let's bring it down here we should be able to bring it around, I think. 13, yeah, we'll be okay. So let's put one of these here. And we'll bring this over. There we go. So now we have a water input. And we've got a power input. But we're going to need to use the farm hatch for output and input. Uh, right For right now, I'm only going to be giving it uh, items manually for the example, so we're going to be using the hatch as an output, and we're going to break this cobblestone block in here, and I'll explain why we're going to do this. Uh, where is the cobblestone transport pipe and a chest? By default, the hatch will output on its own the items that uh, it gets from the bottom, so you don't actually need a wooden transport pipe and an engine. It just dumps them out the bottom, so what we can do is we can put a cobblestone uh, transport pipe here, and we can put a chest here. And as this farm starts working, it's going to output to this chest. And we'll get the wood and the apples and the saplings that it doesn't want uh, after it fills them up completely. And, ooh, we're coming along pretty good on water, too. That's going to be nice. Okay, so what we're going to need is obviously dirt. We're going to need some fertilizer. And we're going to need some saplings. So let's go get some saplings and let's go get some dirt. I've got enough fertilizer right now. And we don't want to turn on the engines just yet because we don't want to explode some pipe. So let's run inside and grab... Actually, let's turn this rain off. It's driving me nuts. It's driving me nuts. Let's go grab some dirt. And I think everything's done smelting as well. I meant to mention that. I was smelting all the materials from the quarry. Oh, dirt. Dirt, dirt, dirt. Let's just grab a bunch of dirt. Oh, we need saplings too. You guys forgot to remind me to get saplings. What the heck? Do I even have saplings? That could be a problem. Uh, I thought I had saplings. Oh, I do. They're outside. Derp. They're from the test uh, farm. We could have actually grabbed everything from the test farm, but I'm an idiot. So... 
we had to go back inside. <laughs> Let me eat really quick and let's grab some saplings. Let's grab three or four here. It's fine. Not a problem. We've got 30 something fertilizer, so. Oh, there's a chicken. There's a nugget. It's a mini nugget. So let's go downstairs. And we're going to provide the farm with all the materials manually. We're not going to pipe it all in yet. We'll show that in a later episode as I get uh, all of them set up and show the automation. So on the left side in the top, it takes dirt. Um, and this dirt is mixed with the fertilizer and creates hummus. Now hummus is used to plant saplings on top of. The saplings go in the top right section of the uh, GUI. And in the bottom sections are the output for whether it be sand, apples, saplings, so on and so forth. So we should have all of the items we need and hopefully we can get some power to this thing. Now I, th I think two should be able to power it. I know there's going to be power loss from distance, but I think we're going to be okay. Let's go ahead and turn these on. And let's see if it's going to give us some power. Oh, there it goes. It's going to blink on and off, but it should start making some stuff, I think. Let's see if it starts making some, uh, some hummus. Oh, there it goes. Now it's going to be slow at, at the start because those engines are just now starting up and there's not going to be a constant current. So it's going to stop and go and stop and go and stop and go. So we'll give this a couple couple minutes here to finish. It's going to take a little bit, obviously, but as you can see, it's going to do these three and then it'll start doing sapling. Sapling, 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 and then it'll do again and again and again and again. All the way around uh, this open area that I created. And it plants them on top of those stone bricks uh, that you could see when we were downstairs. That is the area that it plants it in. So it won't actually go out here onto this dirt. It actually only goes into this open area that I created. And this is the smallest size you can do. It's a 3x3 three by, three by what is it, 5 or 4? Um, but it, it only goes out 4 blocks from each side and then in between... Uh, the sides. So one, two, three, four, five, six blocks in between those. So we're going to let that do its thing. And some of you are probably noticing this ridiculously looking concrete slab of stuff. And this is our suspended railway that's going to be used as part of the depot between myself and Flaming and as part of a railway system to grab oil from a deposit that's way over there by the train depot. Uh, that's that's used right now in the jungle and we can run out here really quick and show you guys while we're waiting on the tree farm to get going I managed to get that finished it's there's no track on it because I don't have any tr more track I ran out and I don't have enough to get there so we're going to be doing tracks and rail carts um, some storage carts and some tank carts as well in the next episode and we're gonna finish up the water tanks uh, I think also um, we're going to be doing some more farms. We'll go into detail on how to create uh, farms that are of different types. And we're going to be making some circuit boards. We're going to be making some uh, electric tu electron tubes or whatever you want to call them. Um, and as you can see, it's almost finished. It's coming around here. And there's a tree that harvested or that uh, grew, sorry. And we should see it harvest the tree soon there it goes and boom and it replants the sapling so we're going to go downstairs and we're going to check the output chest and make sure that it is actually giving us the items that we want so let's run over here it'll probably be done by the time we get over here but that's okay nope yep you can see the uh you can see the items going into the chest it gave us sand and some wood now the sand is a byproduct of the hummus being uh, harvested with a sapling, uh, it grows into a tree, and then after you break the tree, it turns into sand. It breaks uh, the sand, replaces it with a hummus, and gives you the sand in a chest. Now, what we can do is um, we can recirculate some of this stuff because after it fills up with saplings, it's going to give you saplings. So we can start recirculating saplings back in. 
Uh, I haven't figured out an automated way of doing fertilizer yet, except for just manually giving it fertilizer. I know we can pipe in fertilizer, but I don't know how to how to automate that just yet. So anyway guys, thank you very much. This is uh, this is it for this video. We managed to get the farm working and up and going. It's now giving us an output of wood, so we'll be able to use the wood for some structures and some other things that are, we're going to be doing, um, especially the railways, because I don't want to make it all stone. I want to make use of some wood. Um, let's see, what else was, was there to talk about? I think that was it, yeah. So on the next episode, and there's another tree, <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about more advanced settings and setups for the farms because we're going to be making farms all the way down there. And we're not going to be able to do this manual piping and all this stuff. We're going to need some kind of system uh, with control levers and all that to turn things on and off and send items to certain directions, send items to certain areas. So on and so forth. So with that, guys, thank you very much. As always, my name is Matt, and I will see you guys later.